OK, we're going to revisit the topic of alternatives to radio buttons. A few people have asked whether you can do the approach that I've shown previously for more than two buttons. And actually it gets quite clunky, so let's have a look at a better way of doing it. So let's imagine that we're in a position where we want to give the user the option to type a Y in any one of those four columns. And obviously now you could have 20 columns that they can only put one Y in, so what we want is a way of doing it where we can apply the conditional formatting to the whole row at once. So, let's select the row, and we'll go to Data Validation, and we're going to allow a custom uh, validation as before. Now the validation that we're going to put in this time will basically be, we want it to be a Y, and we want to make sure that there's only one Y in that range. I'm just going to move that down a bit so you can see the range. So, first of all, there's two, two um, validation criteria, so we're going to use an AND function, because both of these things have to be true. So, first thing is, have they typed a Y in? Now the question is here, which cell are we actually writing this formula for? Well, if you look at the highlighted range that I've got here, one of the cells is a different colour. That's the cell with focus, and that's the one that we're writing for. So I'm going to put an A2 in there. So A2 equals quotes Y, and that's shift two quotes. So that's the first criteria. Whatever they type into A2 has to be a Y. Now, because there's no dollars on the A2, that means that when the criteria apply to B2, um, this A2 um, cell reference will change to B2, and so on. So the second criteria is we want to make sure that there's only one, uh, there's no more than one Y. So we're going to use the count if function to count if how many times in that range a Y appears. And that should be less than or equal to 1. So there we go. That data validation now insists that the cell that's typed into has a Y in it, and then it's going to say that actually there should be no more than one Y in that whole range. One last thing that we need to do, this range here, that we put into the COUNTIF function, we need to make that an absolute range so that it doesn't change as you apply different uh, as you apply the criteria to the different cells in the range. So we need dollars on those cells. As you see, I click into the cell reference and I hit the function key F4 and it puts the dollars in for me. But you have to do it to both ends of the range. So now, whichever cell it applies to, it'll check that the cell, the current cell has a Y in it and it'll check that the total in that range is no more than one Y. So let's hit OK on that and test it. Obviously you'd put in uh, the messages and all the other things. So it will allow us to type one Y in. If we try and put a second Y in, we get an error message. And that's all there is to it. You can apply that to as large a range as you like and it will uh, work the same. So let's just have a quick look at that formula again. So an AND function, because both of these things have to be true. Typing into the current cell has to be a Y and you write that for the cell with focus. You use the cell reference of the cell with focus once you've selected the range. And then here's the fixed range. Count up how many Ys there are in that range, and that has to be less than or equal to 1. OK.